And if you had to use one word to describe it, to encapsulate your whole drinking experience in China, what would it be? Uh, I would say it was intense <laughs> and fun, yeah. China's drinking culture is pretty unique. There are customs and social rules built into the whole experience. Because I came from Shandong province in North China, we have very strict um, table manners. So when you enter the room, uh, you have to be very clear what role are you playing on this table. Imagine you have like 10 people on this table, you have to have different tastes for each individual of them. And you have to be very creative in diversifying your messages. You might be expected to drink at a business meeting and even get drunk as a sign of respect. When I first went to China, I actually didn't drink very much. Um, and so it was very awkward for me. You know, as a subordinate, you need to go around and kind of uh, clink glasses with, with your bosses. But drinking in China is not just about getting deals done. Over the years, China's affection for alcohol has naturally developed way beyond just this dynamic. In this series, we'll talk about the drinks that are king across China. And we'll learn about the various ways to harvest and brew from the traditional to the modern. First up, Zhejiang in eastern China, where the city of Shaoxing is located. The city is known for its golden-hued rice wine. The taste? Slightly sweet, nutty, earthy, and incredibly aromatic. Yellow wine was a favorite among Chinese classical poets. Tang Dynasty poet Li Bai penned countless poems while sipping it, sometimes writing about the wine itself. There are three reasons why Shaoxing is the perfect place to brew yellow wine. Shaoxing is a rice growing region thanks to its lush networks of waterways irrigating its land. Fresh water from Shaoxing's mineral-rich Jian Lake is used to brew the wine. Shaoxing also has the right climate for brewing wine. 最大的影响就是它的一个军群。所以你看我们现在这里一个仓库里面,它都是一种卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生卫生
。但这季节生产出来呢，我们不是马上使用的，需要储存一段时间啊，有的储存一年，有的储存三年，有的储存五年。还更长的，我们像工厂当中，我们还有最早的，我们还有百年以上的黄酒储存。That's why a bottle of Shaoxing wine can cost anywhere from two dollars to over twenty-five hundred dollars. It depends on how long the wine was aged. In Shaoxing, this wine is an essential part of local cuisine. It's often paired with the region's famous hairy crabs, for example. 要保持原汁原味的，那么绍兴酒是最好的。一个菜系也是比较符合这个我们黄酒的一个菜系，啊，江南这一带地方菜系呢，应该说，比如说是那个上海菜、杭帮菜，这些菜呢，应该说比较清淡。酒当中本身就有一种大量的这个，我们讲的是谷氨酸。These amino acids remove the fishy smell from seafood， 所以它不会破坏这个味觉，不会破坏这个菜的美食。啊，那么像我们这一代的呢，最合适的就是海鲜、河鲜，啊，这个湖鲜，这个当然是最好的一个配菜。绍兴的老百姓当中，它应该也算是一个生活必需品了。黄酒呢，它不太适合干杯，它真的属于是叫慢慢品的老酒。Up next, we try China's most famous. And feared liquor, Baijiu. Oh, that's not very good. <laughs> We find out why it's getting more popular with the younger crowd in China. Ganbei. <laughs> <laughs>